Hi, so now we're going to talk a bit about how to um, turn a rough model into a color final model um, and some different methods to do that and kind of what those two different things mean. Um, so for me, a rough model is something that captures the 3D elements of the design um, in scale but is not representative of applied detail or texture or color or any of that. So this is a great example of a rough model piece. It is in scale, it is made out of cardboard, um, it's just a neutral color, you know, um, and there is a pencil sketch of, of a door on it, which gives us just, just enough information. This is this figure right here from before this also very much lives in a rough model world for me. You know, um, it's just the most basic outline of a person. And um, this also, this backdrop that we made earlier, I'm just gonna condense this, um, also feels very much like a rough model to me, right? It's made with Sharpie and pencil and there's no color and it's very rough so all of these things to me feel very much like they're a rough model right they're in scale they are representative of the real objects um, but it doesn't quite capture the end picture or the feeling or the mood all of those things that color help capture so um, you will notice that at some point you have it, what is going to be referred to as a rough model do and then um, for the final you will have a color model do. So the reason why we work in a rough model first is so that we don't spend a lot of time making it pretty while we're still figuring things out, okay? A rough model is nice because you can cut out, you know, a square from cardboard in a couple minutes or even less, and maybe you discover, oh, this is way smaller in the space than I thought it was gonna be. I thought that a 10 foot tall wall, which this is, would look way bigger next to this person. You know, a lot of the time we discover things like that. Things aren't as, as we imagined them to be. So it's really easy to throw this away and cut out another piece, right? Or even have this and then just tape it to to another piece j just to get a better idea of size you know um, I always like to play around with things like that um, and then once we move into the color model that's when we really know what we want and now it's about adding in that addition of color and kind of cleaning things up a little bit okay so I thought it would be helpful to show you all how I would turn this as my rough model piece into my final model piece. And I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. Um, the first way that I'm gonna show you is starting completely fresh. So I've done some pre-work here to try to keep this video quick because I know they're getting long. So I cut out um, a piece of our illustration board. Remember, it's kind of the thicker board that says Crescent on the back. Um, this is really a nice material to use for um, a final color model for the walls, if you if you have any walls. Um, really nice and thick, good weight. I love this stuff, and it takes paint uh, pretty well. This I achieved this color by using um, some acrylic paint. Um, you could do a test with watercolors as well. I'm not sure how well those take. Um, so I pre-painted this, it's pre-cut out. I cut out the square first. All I did was I traced this, I threw this down on my um, material, I traced this, I cut it out, I painted it really quickly, and um, I also made a little door. Um, this was done with pencil. Ideally, you guys use your colored pencils for things like this. I don't have any colored pencils with me, unfortunately, so um, I just use a regular pencil. And this is what I'm going to use as my door. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to glue my door onto my wall. So I'm going to take my glue. 
I'm gonna put a little bit like that. And I'm gonna take a scrap, just a scrap piece of cardboard that I have lying around and just kind of smear this. We always want to do the schmear method for um, pieces of material that we're going to be laying fully flat onto another material. Um, we want that nice, even, thin, very thin layer of glue. So I have a very thin layer of glue on there. I know you, or you can kind of see it shimmering. And I'm going to carefully place this on my wall, like so. And just press down on it. Boom. See what a step up this wall is compared to this. Now, again, we want to make sure that everything is in scale. So to do this, I made sure that my door was standard door height. It is seven feet tall and three feet wide. You can find all of that stuff on Google, guys. It's really simple. Type in standard door height. You can also, if you have a tape measure at home, measure your own door. Measure a window in your room. Make sure you measure those things because sometimes your perception of them is different than they actually are in reality and that helps everything to feel really nice and real. So I have my door there, I have my person, the only thing left to do is add a jack to the back of this door so that it stands up straight. Since this is the back side, we can keep it looking the same as it would for the rough model just with some cardboard, right? So we're gonna really quickly Make sure you, you treat your final color model pieces with care. You don't want to have to rebuild those. So when you're, you know, gluing, push it out of the way. Don't, don't be laying down globs of glue with that right under it like I almost just did. And uh, be sure to wash your hands often and things like that. I know mine are dirty right now, so I'm not setting a very good example. Um, but the paint is dry. Um, but you don't want to, you know get blue paint on something that's supposed to be white or something of that nature so just holding down that jack and now I have a lovely finished color wall for my model. The other way I could do this if I wanted to transform this into a final color model piece is I could just keep I could use I could keep these as the bones so I pre-did this as well I just took a piece of my watercolor paper, just a scrap of that, and I painted out this blue color really roughly. So I'm going to take my, my model piece now and I'm just going to lay it over where that blue color is. And I'm going to, with my pencil, trace the outline for this piece. Oh, the right side didn't take it all. How funny. What? Is that not... Sorry. I don't know why this isn't showing up. Okay. Gee whiz. So I have my outline. And I'm just going to cut that out. I'm going to cut this out. And it's always good to be try to be thinking ahead. So if you have, let's say you have multiple walls. Say you have six walls that you all want the same blue color. Don't do this one by one by one. Paint the whole, paint a whole page blue, right? and then outline them all and cut them out all at once. Um, always try to be thinking a couple steps ahead with model building. Um, it will save you time. Think about things that are the same and if they're the same, make them multiple at once. So now I have my blue square, which I did a boo-boo and 
That's some um, pencil left over. So now that I have this, I'm going to take my rough model wall and just glue this on top of it. Same glue method. I want to lay down the glue and then smear it out. There, if you might find you put down too much glue and you're picking up too much on your smearing tool, just rub that off on a on a scrap piece like I do here. I always have some sort of messy little scrap piece that I can like, you know, rub glue on or paint or whatever, whatever mistake I've made <laughs> because model building is all about making mistakes. It will happen. And I'm just going to press this down. I want to really make sure that that is glued on there nicely and that it isn't going to be peeling up on the edges and like look, look messy and gross, you know? Boom. Lovely. And then, sorry, I didn't take the time, but, um, and then I would do the same door thing, apply the door separately. You also could, if you really like to paint and you're good at painting, paint the door right on here. Um, I'm going to recommend as much as possible that you do collaging techniques and layering techniques um, just because then if you mess up with one thing, you don't mess up the whole thing. You know what I mean? Um, right now, if I took some white paint and tried to paint a white door on here, um, if I messed up, then I have to repaint the whole thing blue. Wait for that to dry and then try to paint my door again. You know what I mean? Whereas doing it separately, I just find it easier um, to stack after the fact and kind of collage. So um, that's some tips and tricks for taking your model into color. You also can utilize the computer. I am trying to focus on hand techniques for us. Um, because these are the supplies that I know we all have access to based on the kits we, that we picked up at the beginning of the year. Um, but if you know your way around Photoshop and that's something you want to implement, if you, um, you know, want wallpapered walls and you have this wonderful wallpaper piece of research um, and you want to print that out and, you know, make it tiny, and, and tile it and print it out and cut it out and glue it on, hey, do that too. Um, so there are all sorts of different things you can do. All right.